guys, Big Gun 81 here. As always, hope you guys have a good day. Um, just got something in the mail today uh, from Osage uh, County Guns. Um, I believe it's going to be my SIG brace that I just ordered, the uh, SBX SIG brace. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what's inside this box. Let's go ahead and rip this thing open. It's got a couple staples on the end. Nice. So we got the new SBX uh, Sig Sauer Sig Tech uh, pistol stabilizing brace for the uh, AR-15 pistols. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. Okay, before I go ahead and open up this box though, I probably should show you what it's going to go on. Um, here is my uh, 300 blackout pistol that I custom built. Um, I'm not going to go into too many details on it because I'm going to save that for another video. It's still kind of a work in progress. I mean, it's, it's built, it's complete, I fired it, but there's some things I'm going to tweak on it and change along the way. Um, one of the things being this uh, SIG brace. That was one of the first things on the list really to uh, change on it. Um, but I will tell you this, I'm, right now currently this one is set up with a uh, Rock River Arms uh, pistol buffer tube assembly. Um, it's a pretty nice uh, buffer tube. It's a little longer than some of them. Um, and it's got the nice fluting and the knurling on here and everything. And uh, overall, it's a nice, nice buffer tube to use. But there's other ones. There's a whole bunch of different kinds out there, as you may already know. Um, some even designed more suitably for the SIG braces. Uh, some of them have different collars and different things that you can add to help with how far. Um, away from the receiver that this uh, brace is going to extend. And the whole idea of the brace, the actual purpose that's built for and designed for, is to act as like a forearm brace. To actually, um, this portion of it on here, you can see in the picture a little better maybe um, than when I open it up, we'll see, uh, until I install it of course. This basically, you put your arm through it and it straps around your arm to give you extra support instead of holding your AR pistol with one hand and just on the grip. Um, so this just gives you another option as far as to, to help support it when you're using it because it's a little bit of an awkward thing being that um, the way it's just designed. Um, you know, it's not really um, a traditional pistol in the sense, but it is a pistol. Uh, so anyway, I won't, like I said, I won't go into any details on the, on the, uh, the AR pistol itself. I'll save that for another video once I get everything all straightened around with it and adjust it how I want it and everything. But let's go ahead and open up this uh, box here and see what exactly comes with it and what's inside. Again, I haven't actually had one of these in my hands yet, so um, this is kind of a new thing for me to try out. And I was kind of deciding between getting the original style, uh, which looks similar to a traditional stock, more so than a, um, you know, a uh, brace. But uh, I... I just ultimately decided to go with this one because you know it's a new design, it's a little different. Um, so we got the brace, <clears throat> there's an owner's manual here, and of course the uh, copy of the, holding it upside down, the ATF letter, uh, the VATF E letter, I guess I should say, um, that basically talks about how this is not a stock and it's designed to be a brace and that kind of stuff, I guess. Um, this is dated from back in uh, 2012. So anyway, keep that, and definitely I would I'd recommend keeping a copy of that letter with you. Um, there's also a couple other letters out there that kind of describe the um, how basically this this brace does not make this pistol into a rifle because this is not a stock. This is a brace for your for your arm. So let's look in this owner's manual and see what they kind of say as far as to how to install it. And I know it's from, from seeing this before online, it appears that it just basically slips on the end of the buffer tube. Um, so skip through all this stuff about the features and this and that, and uh, the instructions. Make sure your pistol is unloaded and safe. Of course, obviously, mine is. We always safety check it before we film. Uh, no cartridges in the chamber, no magazine in the magwell. 
and bolts open in fact. Uh, it says apply a dry lube such as talcum powder to the inside of the buffer tube. Yeah, receptacle. Uh, slide the SBX S or SB15 over the buffer tube. Adjust the brace on the on the tube for proper arm fit. And of course they show in the pictures here too. They don't show the, the second strap. Oh yeah, there's a, I forgot to say this. I kind of noticed that there was a strap sticking in here. Um, the second strap that, that comes with it, uh, they show it on the SB15 down here, but they don't show it on the picture on the top. Uh, but it looks like it's basically just an extra strap that you can put around your arm uh, and around the buffer tube and the, the brace to help give you a little bit more support than just the single strap alone. So uh, we'll see how this fits onto the, um, the Rock River Arms buffer tube. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting material. It's kind of like a harder rubber. I mean, you can kind of see when I squeeze it there. It's kind of like, almost like putting a bicycle grip on, I imagine. But the bottom part of it is very uh, rigid. Now, this is nice. It says made in the USA. Patent pending. Made in the USA. Bonus. <clears throat> One of the main differences, I guess, from uh, looking at videos on the SB15, and I don't have one, so I can't really speak too much about the differences myself. But I guess in the SB15... The previous version of this, uh, this portion is open in the back, um, you know, versus the way this one's made where it's closed off. Now, maybe for those who need some type of insert or, uh, you know, some type of uh, spacer to space this uh, brace further back, you know, if you got really long arms or whatever, uh, exactly, uh, you know, maybe instead of putting a spacer on the end of the tube back here, Maybe you can actually put a spacer on the inside if you have something that's the same diameter. Just tuck it down in there, and then you can space it further back onto the uh, on the end here and see. Um, so yeah, we'll see how this fits on there. Maybe kind of a tight fit from what I understand with the Rock River Arms. Yeah, it's going to be definitely. So you can kind of see. How it's stretched up on top here so the rubber is going to have to expand a little bit to get that on so i'll be playing with that probably off camera because it's going to involve a little bit of struggle i'm sure to slip it on there but um that's not really a bad thing because i don't really want this slipping and sliding around on this buffer tube we want it nice and tight uh, of course so um yeah i'll play around with that and see how it works another thought i had too about this as far as if i want to keep this uh you know space further back on the tube because it looks like it'll probably ride about there um, just by design um, if I want this to ride further back for my arms um, they do there are collar clamps out there that look like they may work where you could slip a, this uh, clamp on it might even be a either one piece or a two piece design where you, know, you got two allen screws and you could either clamp it this way or um, it acts like a, a band with a, a single bolt through it and you can clamp it on the tube, and that way the brace will only be able to go far, as far forward as wherever you set that clamp. Um, so that's one thought I had about it. Because um, there really isn't any way to lock this from moving forward, uh, you know, onto the tube. It's going to go on as far as it'll go, pretty much. But it's also going to be a tight fit. Like you saw, the rubber's going to have to stretch a little bit to get it on the end of the uh, buffer tube. And this one's a little different too than most buffer tubes. Usually they're smooth all the way around. This one's fluted. Um, you know, it's aesthetically nice, but I don't know how well it's going to work with uh, this um, SIGTAC brace or this uh, six hour SBX pistol brace. Um, we'll just try it out and see what happens, and I'll show you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, so before I continue here, as you see, I've got the brace installed, but uh, before I continue, this magazine's empty, just in there for demonstrational purposes. Chamber's empty, uh, and we're on safe. So how I got this brace installed on here was a not an easy task. Uh, I didn't use any talcum powder or any type of lubricant or anything like that, like they suggested. Just basically used some force, because I didn't want any chance of this uh, brace slipping or moving or anything like that. Because if I have lubricant on there, or dry lubricant or whatever, it may still aid to the, to the um, this brace shifting around basically. I don't want to do that. So I sit on the bench like so with the uh, brace facing upwards and 
just started pushing the pistol down into it. Got it about an inch in, and uh, the next step I did was I noticed there was a line here from the molding process, and it's about in the center. And I lined that up with the uh, receiver because I don't want this brace to be off, off centered, off to the left, off to the right, that kind of thing. Um, as I got it out a little further, it was more and more difficult, obviously, to push it on because of how uh, how tight this fits on here. So the next thing I did was take a block of wood, put the muzzle up against the block of wood, put it down on the ground where I can get more of my body weight over it, put my hands over the back of the uh, brace and just basically pushed it down onto it. And I, I purposely only pushed it on this far because that's the length that I, I prefer at this point. I may change that later as I use it. I don't know. Um, but uh, anyhow, I can say this, my impressions of this uh, brace, you know, when I first heard about these braces, I thought, well, it's a cool option, but I wonder how well it works. And again, I haven't tried it at the range, but now that I've had it in my hands, I've got a much better feel for what it, what it is and what it'll do. Um, but yeah, I didn't have a real good sense of if it was worth the money to buy. And it is kind of expensive to me. It is, it is a little bit high priced for a piece of rubber with a Velcro strap, but what it actually functions, or how it functions, I should say, is the biggest you know benefit of all on it um why i chose this one first though over the sb15 i was really kind of torn between the two the original design i kind of like the looks of it better in some ways but in other ways i like this one a little bit better um i saw some benefits as far as the functionality of the sbx uh, that i liked um first i just like that it was covered back here versus the opening that the sb15 has at least, you know, again, I'm comparing it based off other people's reviews and videos that I've seen of, of uh, the SB15. Um, and I just like the overall thicker strap that it had. I like that how this, uh, the way that this portion of it was made, uh, it's very rigid. In fact, even though this is not pressed all the way onto the buffer tube, and there's probably an air gap in there about, you know, about that long, um, this is not spongy or, or really flexible or anything like that. It's very, very rigid for being rubber. Uh, so I like I like the you know these features of it, and that's why I ultimately chose to go with the SBX. Now, now that I have it on here, though, it, I just I like the feel of it. Um, anyway, let me show you how it's meant to be used. It's meant to be used as an arm brace, like so. Put your forearm in there. And you put the Velcro strap over it, and you can also use the auxiliary strap they give you too, as well, and just kind of wrap it around the. The rest of the uh, buffer tube there in the brace and around your arm. Now this is very awkward. Yes, you can shoot it one-handed, but you're not really going to be able to have a sight picture on it, so that's very goofy. The next thing you could do is you could use your hand on the handguard, hold it out like so, and not really get a good cheek weld because it's a very awkward position, but you'd get a decent sight picture out of it. So that's how it's kind of meant to be used as a brace for your arm. Now some people will shoulder it and like so now the ATF does did recently determine that shouldering it does not change the classification of this this product or this device it doesn't change it from a brace to a stock it is still a brace so no matter how you're using it it doesn't change what it is in that sense this pistol does not become a short barrel rifle because this is not a stock. Um, so it's a way to be able to have means to shoulder it, to brace it, and still be able to, to use it, this pistol more effectively, but yet it's not changing the classification and, of the, uh, the pistol into a rifle or, or short, -barrel, short barrel rifle. Uh, so that's a very good option, um, especially for the, when you consider the cost of it compared to the cost of buying a short barrel rifle um, and some states it's not, not something that's even doable uh, or it's very difficult to do in that respect. So overall, I like it. I look forward to using it. Uh, once I get some, uh, some time in at the range with this, I'll probably make another little update video or something about it. Uh, I'll probably also make a video about this particular pistol once I get it completed the way I want it. Uh, I'm looking at maybe adding a different, uh, at least at this point, at least looking at adding, adding some type of optic to it uh, in the sense of like a red dot or whatever. Uh, maybe another Bushnell TRS-25 because they're not very expensive. Um, and also maybe thinking about changing my handguards on here, changing the handguard out, maybe the muzzle device on it.
Uh, it's a, this, the uh, regular A2 style, you know, compensator, flash hider, whatever, to do something a little different. So once I get it all dialed in the way I want it, I'll probably make a video about this and, and that kind of stuff. But uh, anyway, the Sig Sauer SB, um, SBX, definitely worthwhile checking out. Uh, if you have an AR pistol, I think it's, it's very beneficial. Uh, I would definitely suggest keeping the little ATF letter with you just because some some people do not know what this is. They might think it's a stock and it's not. It's a brace. Uh, if you have a Magpul or a similar style um, grip like this, this particular MOE Plus grip um, has a little cover here that comes off. You can make a photocopy of that letter, you know, roll it up and put it inside the, the grip so you at least have it at all times with your pistol. So just a good suggestion maybe to do. Maybe you want to make a copy of the letter that, that, that's out there that also states that shouldering this device does not change the classification. Wouldn't be a bad idea to have that with you too if you could fit it in there. So uh, anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and until uh, next time, go out and have some fun shooting. Thanks for watching.